everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today is a bit of a nostalgic one for me because as we are getting closer to fall, I don't know where you are, but here in Colorado, you definitely smell a little bit of a change in the air coming and, you know, kids are going back to school, which, you know, got me thinking about some of the school AV equipment that I grew up with. And one of those was a shoebox cassette player. And that's what we're gonna take a look at today. A brand new, if you can believe it, shoebox cassette player. Now, if you were like me, if you're of my generation, you will be, you know, blown away by the idea that anybody would want one of these again, because this is literally what you would listen to at school. This wasn't the cool kind of cassette player you would have in your house, one that you would want. This was the industrial, educational, you know, utilitarian, cassette player, but Tyler's bringing it back and actually they're not the only ones. There's a lot of, or a few different companies that are bringing these shoebox style players back. And it's kind of impressive actually to see the interest level in these. And I think it's cool. I think it's a very nostalgic thing. I mean, when I see this, it takes me right back to my childhood to sitting there with these super rigid white and blue plastic headphones, listening to colored cassettes of you know school programs and educational materials here we go this is the tyler portable cassette recorder with a built-in speaker battery or dc operated and it, it includes an internal microphone as they all used to do and we're going to test all of that out so i am excited because this is neat i mean this is something that we haven't seen for quite a while all right there is the power supply I would uh, venture to say this is a lot more compact than the original ones. If I remember the original ones, and I don't know if, you know, Caliphone made stuff like this, and I, I remember the power supplies being this big giant wall warts, and here we have this tiny little thing. It's amazing. So, oh cool, look, it does have the old external microphone. I thought it was just talking about one built into the grill. Oh, that is really cool. Oh, I'm already thinking of cool things we could do with this. This is neat, okay, so we got that microphone. And I love these cartons that they put some equipment in these days. I think that's really cool. We got thank you for your purchase. We got the manual. Tyler's stuff is so cool. I love it. Here's the carton. Same materials like your uh, drink carrier for McDonald's. <laughs> I think it must, I don't know why this is completely nerdy, but I've wondered how these are made and they must be blow, foam, blow formed from like a liquid or something that they shoot out of a, a gun into some sort of mold and then it dries, but they're very rigid. That would be a good thing to hold on to to, you know, keep parts in or something, actually. And here is the unit itself. Big reveal. It's awesome. Just like I remember it, it's big, it's bulky, it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I love this thing. And yes, it does have the handle. For those of you guys that grew up with these, you remember they had to have the handle and this one does too. Uh, so we've got our speaker in there. The transport uh, mechanism is there, the transport controls. There's the little built-in mic. So we'll test that and this external cool one they included. We've got the handle down there. Underneath here, we've got the cautionary statement, battery compartment. I wonder if that power supply will fit in there for storage. I bet it will. The plastic seems to be a pretty high quality ABS. Honestly, it doesn't feel flimsy. I feel like it's, you know, as sturdy as it needs to be. Here are the controls here on the side and connections. We've got the six volt power supply, the phone jack, the REM jack, and the mic jack, and then a volume control. I have to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, mic, obviously. REM would be a control. It's smaller than the eighth inch. So I'm guessing that I can look in the manual here in a minute, but I'm a guy, I don't read the manual. Um, and then phone which I'm, I'm assuming that's a, uh, like a mono output. So yeah, let's look under the hood here a little bit. And I'm assuming this is a Tanishin mechanism, which I believe it is. Okay guys, so this is definitely indicative of a Tanishin cassette mechanism. Uh, another way to tell is the sort of curly Q spring that's usually right over here. In this case, it's covered by that plastic. But if you don't see that and you do see the blue, then you can be pretty rest assured that this is Tanishin because Tanishin uses a continuous magnet. So that magnet, that blue magnetic head is always energized. And that's why it's at an angle because it's moved away from where the tape path will be. Whereas a higher end tape mechanism uses an electromagnet that's only activated 
when you are actively recording. So now let's see if this is a mono tape head or a stereo one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a mono tape head, which again, for a classroom player of this nature, it's what, would, it's what I would expect. That being said, you know, the parts down here, the pinch rollers and the heads it's themselves actually look pretty sturdy. So I'm looking forward to this being a pretty robust unit. So it's really interesting. There was nothing at all mentioned about this having an external microphone. That was completely a surprise. I went back and looked at the box. It says includes an internal microphone and a connection for an external microphone, but it didn't say about the microphone itself. Okay, so if you are back in 1987 and you're sitting there at your uh, grubby little desk in school and you go over to the music station, it was usually a little half circle table with maybe five of these machines with little, like I said, blue and white headphones plugged in. You were not thinking this is an enjoyable audio listening experience. It was just the novelty of sound. I remember thinking to myself, this was kind of fun. It's better than regular school stuff, but not that exciting. But you were probably listening to a colored cassette like this one. I know this is Lion King. This is not the 80s, but you get the point. By the way, let's check out that mechanism. Ooh, that's a harsh mechanism. You know what? Some people say that eject mechanism, if it's gentle, indicates quality. I don't know if I believe that or not, but again, this is an industrial, rugged schoolroom player, right? Okay, so. Let's go ahead and hit play. Fast forward. You know, one thing I've noticed is that the modern cassette mechanisms, rewind and fast forward is very slow in comparison to vintage equipment. It's as loud as it gets. With like a little more volume. Oh, weird, look at this. It sounds like it's rewinding, but the, it's not actually rewinding. The heck? Hmm. Okay. That's weird. Well, there's an issue with the fast forward. Seems to rewind, okay. Okay, interesting. I'll try and fast forward again. Yeah, it doesn't like to fast forward. Playing is okay. Interesting, okay. Let's try something that was around in 1987 because it just came out. A little bit of a speed problem there. I don't think Michael Jackson ever sounded quite that high pitch. Man, that's memories right there. I had this, and I had, not had, but I used these, but never at the same time. <laughs> Doesn't like to fast forward. Okay, well that's not great. Let's go ahead and test recording. I'm gonna test the uh, built-in microphone and the external microphone. With that microphone having a little eighth inch mono connection opens up a world of possibilities with other equipment as well. Uh, by the way, I did read and I didn't see anything about, and I know you guys know this, clearly I don't. I know what mic is. Phone, I believe, that's typically like phones is usually a mono headset. So I'm assuming that's a headset jack. Um, but this, REM, it's got to be a control. I'm thinking REM and I'm thinking controlled. It's got to be controlled because it's smaller. I don't know. You guys already know and you've told me in the comments below. But I did read that this doesn't like to record chrome or metal tapes. Only the regular, uh, you know, type 1 tapes. So... That's what I'm using primarily anyway, but I just thought I'd mention it, so. Okay, let's go ahead and record. Okay, this is a test, recordology test of the Tyler portable recorder and cassette player playing on a Type 1 normal position RCA blank tape. 
and hopefully you can hear me clearly, this is using the built-in microphone. Okay, let's go ahead and rewind and play it back. By the way, it does have an automatic volume control or input volume control. But the test of the Tyler portable recorder and cassette player playing on a Type 1 normal position RCA blank tape. And hopefully you can hear me clearly, this is using the built-in microphone. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and use... I mean, it's okay. I mean, I had... My dad had one of these, and I remember he took, he took it on a trip. I'm going to plug in this external mic and test it now. He took it on one of our vacations and recorded all kinds of audio. So it all started that soon. That's where I got interested in all this stuff is through my dad. Um, a lot of it reminds me of him. Anyway, love you, Dad. Anyway, um, I remember he recorded a lot of audio on his shoebox player that he had. And I, I remember it sounding a bit better than that, actually. So it was adequate for, you know, it's kind of like those boom boxes we, rec we had the built-in mics. It's adequate if you want to get some thoughts down, but you're not going to be like recording a concert on there or anything that you want to enjoy for the audio quality. Okay, let's set this aside. I'm gonna use this external microphone. This looks like the microphones that used to come with PCs, you know, back again in the 90s. So I don't know. I don't know if it's literally the same microphone just on a long piece of plastic or if it's got a bigger element. I don't know, so let's find out. Okay, this is a test, a microphone test. One, two, three, four. Again, of the Tyler portable recorder and cassette player. This time using the external microphone with a little swivel stand plugged into the microphone input on the side. Testing one, two, three, four. Okay, let's see if this sounds any better. One, two, three, four. Again, of the Tyler portable recorder and cassette player. This time using the external microphone with a little swivel stand plugged into the microphone input on the side. Testing one, two, three, four. It's hard to say if the issues with the sound quality is because of the microphones. By the way, it sounded to me the same. Maybe a little bit fuller on this, but pretty similar. I don't know if it's an issue with the recording or something in the transport or if it's the actual microphone but it sounded pretty similar, so. Okay, guys, there it goes. That is the Tyler Shoebox Portable Cassette Recorder. I think it's cool, and you know, when they're rolling off the assembly line by the millions, there's gonna be some that have an issue, and maybe mine just has an issue with that fast forward. Maybe it's something that I can break in over a period of time. Let me see if I can fast forward this. That really does not like to fast forward. That is so weird. That is so strange. Um, hard to say. I would assume it's an individual issue, not a design issue. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't have slapped their name on it. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you do want to snag one of these, I'm going to put links in the description below where you can check the latest prices. You will notice that we are going to start using Walmart links as well. And uh, so you can buy it through Walmart. You can buy it through Amazon, whatever you want to do. I do get a lot of questions from time to time about what the price is of a particular piece of equipment. And I don't put the prices in the descriptions anymore because the prices change, availability changes. The best thing is to click the link in the description and we'll take you to the latest price for that piece of equipment. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Hope this brought back some fond memories. It did with me. Just a cool little device. I wish the fast forward worked, uh, but still, this is cool. I still think this is neat and something that I will use for something going forward. I don't know what it'll be. Maybe just listening to fun tapes. I don't know. That's going to do it for today, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.